subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to another Ninja Coaching Spotlight. I am so excited today because we have two new guests with us. We have Peggy Shanklin from Long and Foster Realty in Lake Monticello, and we also have our coach, Shelly Colbertson, with us. And uh, I'm excited to introduce both of these two to you. The goal of our journey today is to help everybody see another person's story of coaching. From the moment they kind of figured out what Ninja was about to what coaching is, to who they are today and how this has been for them. So welcome both of you. Peggy, I want to start with you. So again, Long and Foster Realty, Lake Monticello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, quickly introduce yourself. Tell us something a little bit about Lake Monticello and where you're at. I am in Lake Monticello, which is halfway between Charlottesville, Virginia and Richmond, Virginia. It's a beautiful life and paradise kind of feeling. I just love it here. I love it. How long have you been there for? I've been here since November 1st, 2001. My goodness. All right. Great. Excellent. What And what brought you to Lake Monticello? I couldn't afford to live in Charlottesville. <laughs> Simple enough. That's perfect. <laughs> and now you got to live the lake life, which is even better. Yeah. I got a 350 acre lake, five beaches, playgrounds, pickleball, tennis, best neighbors in the world. Oh my gosh. Sounds like a wonderful spot. It is. All right. Lake living is not bad living. Mm-mm. Shelly Culbertson from her trailer. She is joining us on the road, if anybody's wondering uh, Shelly's background there. But Shelly, good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. Give us your quick little background with uh, your ninja coaching and ninja and all that. Yes, I'm actually camping on a beautiful river right now up outside of Portland. I Ninja was brought into my life, actually, it's 10 years ago. And it just not only changed my business, but changed my life. And I felt very strongly that I wanted to pay it forward. So that's how I landed in Ninja Coaching. I love it. I love it. Water is our theme of the day, yes. by the way. I can't. I it is. <laughs> can't jump in on that one here, but uh, I love it. That's a really nice trailer, too. Just, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because I can coach in it. <laughs> All those windows, probably got a beautiful view. This is great. This is great. Everybody's like in a nice Zen state this morning, which is a which is a great uh-huh. way to be talking about experiences with Ninja and real estate and all that stuff because that's what you know Ninja's trying to do is help people you know Zen out a little bit <laughs> so they can increase that income per hour and have a life, right? So I'm excited to dive into a little bit of your background, Peggy. You said you moved to Lake Monticello in 21, and that's about the same time you started selling real estate there. No, I moved here in 2001. Oh, 2001. Oh, I thought you said 21. My bad. Oh, no. I started selling real estate July of 2020. Okay. My first coach was ninja-based. She was not a true ninja coach. So July of 2020, like you got into it like right in the mix of when everything was kind of going sideways. Mm Mm-hmm. Congratulations. (laughs) What a great time to be like, I'm going to go full bore into real estate. (laughs) Where did you come from before that? What were you doing? Before that, I had a cleaning business. Okay. And I had 16 employees and I quickly learned I do not like employees. I'm just not a good boss. <laughs> <laughs> so 2020, you get into real estate. Obviously, and, and this is from my understanding, you jumped right into Ninja too. Like you didn't wait at all. Like that was like a staple piece of your business. How was that? Because we, I mean... We hear from so many people that their number one piece is, I wish I would have started Ninja earlier. I wish I would have brought it into my business earlier. And you're one of the rare ones that like, I don't know any different. This is how I started. How was it getting started on the Ninja foot? It was great. I had Rachel Foster, who was coaching me at the time. Of course, it was all Zoom because it was 2020. And she introduced me to Ninja and we had weekly meetings and I just kind of learn that that's how you should do business. I love it. So with Rachel Foster introducing you into Ninja, how did that process work for you? I mean, it was 2020. So, I mean, installations kind of yeah. didn't exist <laughs> in 2020. <laughs> yeah. We actually left our office area and went to Northern Virginia to take care of family. So I was left without a, a coach. So I knew something about Ninja online. And then I went to found a ninja coach. And my first one and I, I really liked her, but we just didn't seem to have the personality match that I needed. And you guys were 
fantastic. And then you brought Shelly into my life. And she has been dealing with me and guiding me and redirecting me. And just she's made the world of difference. And Peggy, I'm really happy you share that. We have, you know, people that sometimes are like, well, what happens if I get started with the wrong coach? And wrong coaches can happen for multiple of reasons. We have different personality types, different energies, and different backgrounds. And maybe you're like, I need somebody with a little bit of a different, you know, kind of place they're coming from. And it's always one of those pieces that when we need to find somebody a new coach, I feel like we can do it fairly quickly and fairly successfully. And I'm Happy to see that that worked out well for you because Shelly is a, a whole bunch of fun energy. And uh, and Shelly, you're one that I always look at as like, you know, there, there are certain coaches I can place with everybody. There are certain coaches that can handle certain situations and certain types of people. And I always feel like your energy, like you work with certain people really well. Like I know, like when I hear someone for a Shelly, I'm like, Oh, that's a that's a Shelley client, and uh, so I'm happy we made that connection. That's awesome. Well, and I I really like what Peggy just brought up, and I think this is what I really enjoy about kind of the ninja system because it's about relationships, and like we all know, when we're out there in the field with real estate, not every client is really our client because there's some people that you just don't you know the round the square peg doesn't fit in the round hole. And maybe you find them a different realtor. But it's the same thing. We preach that also in coaching in the sense of you've got to have that relationship connection because that's where the magic really happens. Oh, yeah. And when when you do find that right coach, I mean, things just kind of light up. It's really a fun place to be at. Now, okay, so Peggy, you are referred to as the lady at the lake or your lady at the lake. And you shared briefly with us when we were first getting started about where this came from. Tell us the story, because I find little taglines like this. Some people go like, oh, really? Like they get kind of like other realtors or other people can get kind of like, really, that's your tagline. (laughs) They're just jealous because they didn't think of it. But at the end of the day, like these are the things that make people remember you. (laughs) Like these are great. So Peggy, tell me a little bit. What is what is that? Where'd that come from? My mom and I were watching some Netflix series. I forget the name of it, but there was the lady in the lake with a sword and she'd come out of the lake. And my mother was like, that's you. You're the lady in the lake. And I'm like, that sounds like I'm dead because I'm drowning. (laughs) (laughs) So it tweaked it a little bit. (laughs) A little customization. But yeah, everybody calls me, this is Peggy. You know, you're lady at the lake. That's how I get introduced. That's the cool part about those little catchphrases. She's the lady at the lake. If somebody's referring you, talking about you, oh, you know, the lady of the lake. Okay. Like that's the beauty of that tagline. Shelly, when when that came up, you had made a comment of like that had been a critical piece of her getting to where she is right now. So tell me a little bit about what you saw with that. When we got together and started working on database and she had, you know, expressed to me what her demographics were and I'm asking what she really wanted to focus on. And Peggy has worked very diligently in building relationships, having connections, and all of them stem from, I want to be the realtor at the lake. And it took a little bit of traction, I would say probably about nine months And she got her first listing and then it's just started to snowball. Not only did she take that listing, but she worked that listing to get more listings. And it's, it's interesting because what you've been in it two, about two and a half years now. Um, Actually the eighth will be my third year. Yes. Three years now. And she is the realtor at the Lake and golf course community. In three years. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's a Shelly. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no it's a peggy she doesn't work <laughs> i just went i was gonna say <laughs> co- coaches can't do the work for you they can offer suggestions no. guidance they can call you out when you're doing something wrong we can't do the work for you so at the end of the day you couldn't do the work but without her i would not have had the focus i would have been in a million different places still trying to get traction on something so she helped Bring me focus. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a healthy coaching relationship. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think what I appreciate most about what Peggy brings to the table, it's it's twofold. And she mentioned the word focus. And I she is probably one of the most 
focused people, when she knows what she wants, she's very focused and she stays on her agenda. I love it. It's like she writes her agenda and it's like, don't mess with my agenda. (laughs) The other piece is she's very, very good with connections. And so when she got very focused on that late community, you know what? She's involved with the HOAs. She is starting a senior center for the late community. It's like, how can I jump in, literally feet first, but (laughs) how can I jump in and get involved? And rise up with the sword, of course, too, right? (laughs) Yes, with the sword. (laughs) But everything she's done, I mean, granted, she does also work her database. So a lot of her business comes from her database, but she is the queen of connections. I love it. I love it. So Peggy, would you say then with, the ninja systems and how you've been applying that in the three years that you've been doing this actually less than three years. Cause as the time of recording this, there's still three more days left before you hit the three year mark. <laughs> it sounds like weekly routine, staying on your agenda and the 50 live contacts are kind of the, the bread and butter of how you build your business. Can you share a little bit about how you, how you do set that up? Cause that's, that's one element that a lot of people have trouble with is they have trouble with like, how do I, how do I make sure I'm managing and tracking all of these connections? The first few ninja things in the morning. So as far as gratitude affirmations, my two notes, and I do my hot list and my warm list every single day in the morning, it's just my routine. And then I do yoga. So even 4th of July, you know, I, I still do it. I've missed two days and three years. And those two days, I felt like I fell behind. So I do it and I like it. It brings me calmness and gratitude and just puts me in a good place for the rest of the day. The rest of the Ninja, my real estate reviews, I plan them on Monday. I print them on Tuesday. I've already set up who I'm going to give them to. Time blocking is very important when I'm going to make my phone calls, when I'm going to talk to under contracts, pending, you know, each set of of groups. So time blocking really, really helps. That's fantastic. And then showing up to those time blocks, of course, too. She's kind of the poster child, isn't she? <laughs> Peggy, if you can, for me, when we were getting ready, you were talking about your goals and you were talking about the difference of having goals and focusing on your goals, actually having goals you focus on and how that kind of got you to where you are today. I hope I heard you correct about the goals that you have set for yourself and getting you to who you are as a realtor. What's the difference that you saw about like just having some goals and focusing on them? You can have goals and just put them up here. But if you don't focus on them and have a plan, it's not going to happen. Yep. It's kind of the what you focus on expands. So every day I write down my affirmations 25 times and I use my business planning. And I look back on that and see what, if they're still my goals, number one, because things change. Have I reached those goals? If not, why? And am I using stupid excuses for not doing whatever? Or is there a legitimate reason and how I can tweak it to reach that goal? I love it. So constant focus around that. I, you want to be in that place where you can tell when you're on track or you can off, uh, you're off track at any given time. And a lot of people don't realize the more you bring your goals around you, the more you focus on it, the faster you can tell when you're on track or off track. So that's great. For those of the people who've read the book, The Slight Edge, like Peggy, that's exactly you. I mean, you're just doing the, the little things consistently compounding. I mean, not missing... You know, only missing two days in three years of doing the morning routine where you're focusing on your hot and focusing on your warm as as parts of it, which is a big thing that a lot of people like, yeah, I focused on it like, you know, a couple of days this week. But just leaning into that, that setting up everything. I mean, that is the slight edge mentality of just building that consistency and looking at what it compounds to bring you to the top in your MLS in just three years, which is incredible. It's interesting because... I've seen what we've been together almost two and a half years now. Would you see different things happen? You do life. I guess that's the best way. We've done life together for two and a half years. Not only do I know what's going on in her business, I do life with her as a person. One of the things I really appreciate, Peggy, that you bring to the table is the fact that when the curveball comes your direction, it's like, okay, I'm in the moment. This is messing up my schedule. But you know what? I got a couple different ways I can look at this. I can either overcome it and get regroup and get back together, or I can waller in what's going on over here. 
And I've never known Peggy to hang out in what's going on over here. She's always that, nope, let's pull up the bootstraps and let's move, let's trudge forward. That's a pretty huge quality because a lot of times as realtors, it's squirrel, I'm distracted. Oh my gosh, look what's happening over here. And three days later, they haven't looked at their hot or warm list. I'm going to say that's an incredible success pattern that we we watch is the people that can separate those massive distractions from a, this is derailing me to the point that I'm like, oh, I can't do this stuff. This is just never, this isn't easy to being able to separate and be like, that's a moment in time of a distraction over here. Let's get that handled, figured out, get it done so we can get back onto our normal path. Because you can't have the consistency, Peggy, that you've been talking about with us without having that ability of saying, okay, like that's stuff going on and here's my main focus. You just can't get it. So it's awesome. That's why coaching is so important. If I just read the book, went to an installation six months from now, I'd go, yeah, I tried that. But I've got meetings set up every two weeks with Shelly <laughs> and she'll give me things that I need to do and focus on. And then if I do find myself getting into that low negative or high negative I go, I can't do that because I got Shelly to report to. And plus it's no fun over there in the negatives. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm really mean. Shelly's gonna bring you to the positive pretty well too, if you if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly and Peggy, let me ask you this too, because showing up for that coaching relationship too is important, right? I mean, Peggy, it sounds like you have a lot of self-motivation and everything on your own as well, but you also recognize early on, like, hey, if I can have a guide, that's going to be helpful. And showing up, how do you show up? Like, what's part of your intention in showing up and working with Shelly as well that you would feel has contributed to your ability to go out and execute? Because as we said, like, the coach isn't out there doing the work. You're out there doing all this and making all this happen. All the credit really goes to you. But And so you're also showing up for these coaching sessions, right? How do you prepare for that to get the most out of your time with Shelly? One, I look forward to it. <laughs> The minute we end one session, I'm like, I'm ready for my next one. <laughs> but we also do weekly updates. So that keeps me focused. So every Monday or Sunday night, I send her, you know, the weekly report. And then if I have any questions, I write them down or I send her an email and say, I'm dealing with somebody who I just can't figure out how to deal with them, but I have to deal with them. And I think that might give her some time to figure out what to, how to approach it. And then we talk about it. And that has helped a lot. Just having somebody in my corner who I'm not competing with, who is there for me. That's a big deal. And Shelly, same kind of question to you on, on how Peggy's showing up and how you're able to kind of help her and guide her on her path. Well, I'm sitting here trying to think. I don't I don't think there's ever been a time I haven't gotten my the weekly agenda from her. <laughs> Consistency. This is the theme. Consistency. Keep going. Yes. <laughs> It's interesting because I watch the different ebbs and flows of different things. I'm not going to say ebbs and flows. I'm going to say I've watched Peggy just leaps and bounds grow and grow and grow and grow. And when she talks about some of the discussions we have about different um, relationships, it might be realtors on the other side of the transaction, or it could be a difficult seller or buyer or something of that nature. I just love the stories of how the one that really sticks out with me is after, I want to say it was her first year, she started to really just take on listings and just get this momentum going. And then all of a sudden, all eyes in the office are on her like, what are you doing? And then all of a sudden I get this email from her. Oh, guess what? I'm the top producing agent in my MLS that's <laughs> not a team. And I am like, hallelujah. But here's where my theme goes behind it. She had no idea what her stats were. All she knows is she's in there working in her database, making her connections and doing business. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's brought to her attention. Hey, guess what? So for me, that is, that's it in a nutshell. She competes within herself. She doesn't compete with the other realtors. She doesn't have any idea what the other realtors are doing. I actually find the best success comes from when you're not in search of success. You, it, it sounds, Peggy, like your your heart's in the taking care of people. And I mean, obviously, consistency was showing up with systems and just doing the repetition work all the time. But uh, I find the biggest successes come from people when they're just focusing on that. 
And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, I did what? Like, wait, I'm, I'm. (laughs) So that's incredible that you were able to, and that's actually how you came into my world. I had reached out to our coaches and I said, you know, is there any stories that we should be telling out here? And Shelly, if you can imagine that little kid over in the corner going, pick me, pick me. Like, I, I got somebody, I got somebody. And I called her and she's like, Peggy, Peggy Shanklin is who we need to talk to because not only the consistency and we're talking about like what you, I mean, there's also number one in the MLS, right? For non-team. What are your other awards? Because you aren't just like doing the systems and that's why we have you here today. And we're talking to you like in soon to be three years, you've accomplished a lot of awards and kind of levels in your business, in your company, and also in the MLS. Can you share some of those with us? I can because they're in my listing packet. <laughs> I have a binder of all my awards. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Top producer of the year in settled units. Top producer in office. <laughs> office gross commission. Office listing GCI. Office selling GCI. Office sales. So those are my awards. I love it. You have a binder. <laughs> <laughs> but Garrett, what she doesn't share, and this is another thing I love about her, is she's very humble. But she doesn't share that she's heavily involved in her women in business group. She started the farmer's market. What was that? Two years ago now. Mm -hmm. And the farmer's market in her town is huge. Her new project is starting the senior center at the lake. She's heavily, heavily, heavily involved in her community. Not only do they know Peggy Shanklin, lady at the lake, but in her town, they know who Peggy Shanklin is. That's a consistent theme of success that I watch for a lot of people is it's not just about real estate. It's about your love for where you live and love for what you're doing. Was that a planned type of activity, Peggy, to say, hey, I want to do the farmer's market. I want to do the, or is this just something you've kind of just rolled into as the needs been brought to your attention? I started the farmer's market because I wanted a tomato. Simple enough. (laughs) We had had farmer's markets, but the government bureaucracy got involved and they all had to shut down. So I just started one and everybody's like, it's not going to work. I'm like, year three. (laughs) And we're supporting 20 small businesses every single Sunday. Wow. So that's helping my community. That's incredible. It all started with a tomato. With a tomato. We have music, we have food trucks, the community comes out. I just wanted a tomato. That's all I wanted. I wanted a tomato. I couldn't find a tomato. No, I live in the country. In Virginia. (laughs) (laughs) You should be able to get a tomato on the side of the road. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Absolutely. And the community you've built now from this just because of a tomato and rising out of the lake with the sword is is <laughs> incredible. I got my sword. I need to I need a tomato to cut it with. <laughs> uh, okay, Pay, you gotta share you have to share your lake story. I've been coaching her for maybe a year and she's going, You're never gonna guess what happened to me. <laughs> okay, once a year we have a big lake and we get all the veterans together and we take the veterans on cruises. Now a lot of them are disabled. So my job was to reach over, grab the boat, and pull it to the dock and hold it so wheelchairs and walkers could go from the dock to the boat. So I had my keys in my pocket. I reached over to grab the boat. My keys went in the water. Now, I'm trying to you know, look all pretty and everything. Had my hair done, my makeup, cute little outfit. I had to jump in the lake, <laughs> go under, and get my keys. <laughs> so there's a Facebook post of me like, this and then coming out and and I froze to death. (laughs) Did you get your keys though? I did. I did. (laughs) Oh, see? I was just like, no, no, they're too far down. I can't reach. (laughs) But she made a huge marketing piece out of it on Facebook. That was the best part. Truly, your lady not only (laughs) at the lake, but in the lake. But she didn't come out with a sword. That is too funny. I, 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 again, one, happy you got your keys, happy you went for a swim. I thought for a moment I was going to hear about a veteran that maybe went in the water and you went after him. So, uh, keys, I will take the keys. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, where are you going? <laughs> oh man, what a, what a great story. So your, your journey here, obviously, you know, Peggy, when I got a hold of you, you were so quick to say, like, coaching has been a place in your business that's helped you to get to where you are today. 
And is there anything else? And yeah, we want to make sure we don't go. I mean, because I have this feeling we could sit here and talk to you for about an hour. And I know Shelly will keep us here for about an hour because she's got so energy that's just like, <laughs> I got another one. Because I know you will, Shelly. Yeah. But with that being said, is there anything else you want to share about your journey of ninja and coaching that people need to hear about out there? Because I know that there's just nothing better than hearing it from somebody who's been able to be in the trenches with it. I will say that real estate is the one career where you don't have a boss showing you how to do stuff. You don't have somebody telling you when to do it. You are that person. And when you first get into this, or if you've been in it for 10 years and not doing it with a process and just spinning your wheels, you're wasting your time and your effort and you're getting frustrated and you're hating the the job and the career. And you're just like, nobody's selling, nobody's buying. It's not me. But when I tell people, they're like, how did you get to where you are so quickly? I'm like, Ninja. Well, what's Ninja? I tell them what Ninja is. And there's just so many people, and I don't know why, just say, it's just, no, I've heard about that. And then they don't do it. But the ones that do it and commit to it, I mean, coaching, you know, it costs me money, but it has saved me and gotten me so much more. I mean, it more than pays for itself five, six, seven times over. Without Shelly, I would have probably have quit or taken another job and just done this part time and said, oh, well. But as it is, and in a couple of days, I'll be a broker. And I love my community. I love my job. I just love life right now. It's wonderful. It's because of committing to the coaching and the ninja way of life. I appreciate you sharing that so much because so many, it's so easy to look at this journey that you've been on as an expense in your world. And, and it's easy to take that money and go like, Oh gosh, I guess that's a lot. And what else could I do with it? And how else could I live? You know, I know a lot that are like, well, I could either get the car or I could get coaching. And it's an interesting thing that when you, anytime you have somebody that's fully leaned into that experience, and they take that expense and they turn it into an investment for themselves. They always come back out the other side going, it was one of the better investments that I made for myself and my business, which you're a prime example of that. So I'm grateful for you sharing your story with us today. Well, thank you. Yeah. I just had an analogy come to mind. It's kind of like buying a car, getting your license, and then being too cheap to put the gas in the tank. And then wondering why you can't get to work and make any money. That's perfect. <laughs> I love it. That's perfect. And we love car analogies here. So that's, this is. I know you do. <laughs> I listen to you. We'll take car analogies yes. all day long. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, this is great. Well, if anybody needs to find a great realtor up in Lake Monticello, we got Peggy Shanklin here. She's absolutely amazing with Long and Foster. Uh, Shelly, Ninja Coach, thank you so much for coming and joining us today and being a part of my world. Shelly's one of our amazing, again, we've got. Uh, about 30 coaches currently right now, and she's one of the the group, and I appreciate having her in my life and in my business. Matt, thanks for joining me today on this journey as always. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate you all. If you want to learn more about Ninja, if you like the story that you're hearing and these stories that we've been sharing, head over to ninjaselling.com. You can learn more about Ninja Selling there. And you can also, at the top of the page, find coaching and learn more about coaching and connect with one of our incredible coaches as well. And if you're looking for an installation, you can find those there too. And if you want to join our Facebook group, head over to Facebook and search for The Ninja Selling Podcast, and you'll find an incredible group of realtors there who are supporting each other, who will answer your questions and help you on this journey as well if you're just getting started or if you've been in it for a long time as well. So appreciate everybody. Shelly, Peggy, thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks, everyone. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.